Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I just quickly want to show you how you can solve an issue uh, on the connection between the HBA card and the PCI Express slot on your motherboard. So as you know, the SAS drives actually don't communicate fairly well with motherboards from uh, normal PC computers because they don't communicate on the SATA ports. They actually use the SCSI interface. So that's why you will have to use one of these adapters here, which is called the RAID controller that goes into a PCI Express slot on your motherboard. But sometimes that can be problematic. And I will just show you now the problems and issues that I had with it and, I, uh, and how I actually managed to fix it fairly quickly. So let's try and uh, boot up the computer and see the error message that is displayed on uh, the, the PC. So we're booting. And actually the first problem that I see see here is that I haven't even posted into the computer's BIOS yet and the reason is that the HBA controllers have their own BIOS chip on them and there's well on first boot up they try to boot up the BIOS on the controller first to try and initialize and check the status of the HG 240 controller and right after this passes and uh, you get an OK signal then and only then you can boost into your computer's BIOS and uh, take it from there. But unfortunately, on my controller here, I don't have a super cap installed on it. This is the way that I've received it. And you can see an error message that I have here. And if I try to press escape, it basically freezes up and nothing happens. So I can't, I can't go into the computer's BIOS. I can't do anything. I tried multiple restarts. I tried smashing delete. I tried smashing, uh, well, the F11 key on these MSI motherboards that take you to your uh, boot uh, loading device screen and nothing really happened. So I just couldn't figure for the life of me a way around it and uh, I just couldn't see a way to boot back into Windows without removing the HBA card. So now I'm gonna shut down the computer and show you exactly what you have to change in your BIOS so that you can boot into Windows and actually still detect the HBA controller still connected to the PC. I'm pretty sure this works for other manufacturers as well, it's just that the location of the setting might be different into the BIOS configuration. Uh, this applies to the MSI motherboards and well at least the MSI motherboards with this uh, variant of BIOS installed. So here I've shut down the computer, I'm uh, just going to remove power, well, you don't really necessarily have to do this every time but it's just a good measure. I'll remove the HBA controller from the slot. This way you won't have the BIOS being interrupted by the BIOS on the controller itself. So as you can see I've removed it, I've just placed it there temporarily. Turn on the, bar, turn on the power supply, boot up the device and well being old fashioned well just smash delete until I'm into BIOS here. So we're booting up nicely, normally and we're into the BIOS settings now. So guys, as you can see, I'm booted up into the BIOS here. I've removed the HBA controller from the PCI Express slot. And the only setting that I found makes sense to actually change and uh, make your computer work uh, normally and as well recognize the HBA controller was not to change the boot priority. I've tried this uh, several times. I've actually removed all the other um, options here and nothing seemed to be working. It's just this one here setting that it says uh, ASI or RAID, well I just moved it over to RAID and this actually once I will shut down the computer and reinstall the HBA controller into the PCI Express slot, it will actually boot up sort of normally and then you'll have access to Windows and as well to your RAID controller. So let's see how it works. So I'll just uh, click and save the modifications, yes. I'll just let it boot up into Windows and then shut it down normally and afterwards I'll reinstall the HBA controller and with it reinstalled I just uh, turn on the computer and it should boot up normally into Windows. So guys as you can see the HBA controller is installed in the PCI Express slot on the motherboard. The BIOS is already set up so I'll just turn on the machine and see the screen that we are greeted with. You will notice that it actually it's going to take a bit more time to boost into Windows and because the RAID controller, as I've mentioned before, has its own chip which has to run its own BIOS first. So it takes a little bit of time before the HBA controller initializes and communicates with the SAS drives themselves before returning to the normal uh, BIOS post and letting you go into Windows. This is why many people actually opt out into reflashing their HBA controllers to remove the BIOS settings from it. This way you'll have a normal post into Windows without it uh, taking well the two or three extra minutes 
it actually tr uh, turns out that uh, it needs every time you shut down the computer and power it back on. So there we go, we have a normal post now. It's been probably roughly around one minute of extra time. And we're booting up nicely into Windows. There we go. And that's it. Let's see if we have the HBA controller available to us. I'll just use the HP software here. Smart storage. And yes, yes we do. We have the smart HBA controller installed. So guys, this is uh, the end of the video. As you can see, the Windows is actually detecting my controller that is being installed in the PCI Express slot. It actually has one status message telling me that it's running into HBA mode, so no RAID configuration is detected. But it actually gives me physical access to the drives in, uh, inside Windows 10. And actually, yes, I do. I can see them here as being set up into RAID. Uh, there are several ways that you can make this RAID. You can actually use Windows to make this RAID or you can use the integrated software from HP Smart Storage Administrator and once you set it up using this one there will be a few key differences in your task manager when uh, you search your disks. So for instance these two disks here are the disks that I've installed into RAID mode using Windows but if you go and uh, administer your uh, storage using the uh, software from HP then you'll only have only one box here so you'll only see one single unit instead of the two units together thank you guys a ton for watching this video i hope to see you in the next one and don't forget in the meantime to ring the bell subscribe and as well leave a comment if you feel like it to tell me if you ran into similar issues and how you solved it